So when you're first getting into FPV freestyle, there's a lot to think about in terms of what parts and gear are you going to buy, like what, what frame should you build with, what KV motors do you want to run, do you want to build around a 6S battery or 4S battery, but one thing that you definitely don't want to overlook is your FPV goggles. If I had to pick one thing that has the biggest impact on your FPV experience, it would have to be your goggles. That's what actually connects you to your aircraft and enables you to do first person view, actually view through the aircraft. This is what you're seeing with, this is what's actually in contact with your face and it's really gonna define how good your FPV experience is going to be. Now a lot has changed in the world of FPV goggles, right? For a long time we were just on analog video systems, right? So we were just broadcasting out an analog video signal on the 5.8 band and, and picking it up on a receiver and just looking at ultimately a really staticky, not so good looking image. And But now we've got digital HD FPV and that's awesome, but oh, there's some latency and kind of some issues around it being proprietary and you can't use certain things with certain things. It can be very overwhelming and it can also be very expensive. I mean, some of these goggle setups get well over $600 and you just end up wondering, is it worth it? Hey guys, welcome to Rotor Rot. I'm LaDriv and today I'm gonna to be walking you through five FPV goggles that you should consider when you're getting into FPV or even if you've been into FPV for a little while, maybe you wanna change things up. Whatever your case is, these are the five goggles that we recommend. These are certainly not the only five FPV goggles available and if you wanna shop elsewhere, go for it, but these are the five five goggles that we carry in our store and if we carry it in our store that means we believe that we can support it stand behind it and ensure that you have a good FPV experience. Now as we go through these goggles I'm not going to be getting into every single technical spec but moreover I want to give a high level overview of, of what makes the biggest difference between these goggles and what you should be thinking about when you're shopping for one of them and also a little bit of my personal opinion of all these different options which you can take or leave. So to start going through these goggles let's start with the most budget friendly options over here we have the fat shark recon and the fat shark scout now these are very affordable box goggles and what that means is they're going to be a little bit larger than some of these other options that we'll get to and they have a single screen in them uh, with a very simple optic to enable you to focus on that screen right if you, you can imagine if you actually just held a screen like this close in front of your face, your eyes would have a very hard time focusing on it. So there's a simple optic in these goggles to kind of bring that screen into focus and magnify it a bit. Keeping things simple like that keeps the cost down. If budget is very high on your priority list, then it doesn't get any cheaper than the Fat Shark Recon. It comes in at $89. It's gonna be the cheapest option that we're showing here today. And this is truly a bare bones option. There's a single analog video receiver in here, so you just get one place that you can screw in on antenna, runs on an 18650. This is about as simple as it gets, and if truly budget is your number one concern when getting into this, it doesn't get much cheaper than this for something that's actually gonna work and will actually be supported by a good company like Fat Shark. So if you really gotta keep it as cheap as possible, you can scoop up these goggles for $89 new, get a micro drone for cheap, rip it around and have a great time. One step up from there, we've got the Fat Shark Scout. So again, it's still a box goggle, still just got that single display with a simple optic, but these goggles have a little bit more baked into them. It's actually a diversity goggle. You still only have one place to screw in an antenna up top, but there's also also a patch antenna built into the goggles that's along the, the front of the goggles. Now, patch antenna, it's directional. So you can take advantage of having a diversity receiver where the goggle chooses the, the strongest available signal by having an omnidirectional antenna and a patch antenna. And what you would do is when you fly, point your patch antenna, the place where you're gonna be flying the furthest or behind the most obstacles. And that's where you'll get the, the high gain performance out of that antenna where you need it the most. But as you fly other areas, maybe just around some trees or whatever, the omnidirectional can pick it up because you'll be flying outside of the range where the patch antenna is strongest. So both the Scout and the Recon are excellent entry level goggles, but I will say if you can afford the price difference to get the Scout. I do think it's worth it because you get much improved RF performance by having that patch antenna and you're going to be able to fly in more serious environments with more obstacles and obstructions. The Recon is going to be really good for flying a micro drone around your house but if you actually want to use one of these to fly a larger drone in a real freestyle environment this is going to be worth having. Now one downside to both of these goggles is they're limited to analog only. If you're convinced you're only gonna be flying analog, that's great. But if you're interested in doing digital, 
you're gonna need to get one of these three goggles. Two of these goggles are made by Fat Shark, the Attitude V6 and the HDO2. And this last goggle is made by DJI. It is the DJI V2 FPV goggle. Let's start with the two Fat Shark goggles. The Attitude V6 is a new offering from Fat Shark, kind of a mid-tier option that it's a, it's a bit less expensive than the HDO2, which we will get to, but it's still compatible with Fat Shark's HD system, Shark Bite. So when you get the Attitude V6 goggle, you get analog receivers built in. It's actually a, a diversity receiver. You get two patch antennas in the box, so you can pull these goggles out of the box and fly them with your analog drones. And the comfort of these goggles and the HDO2s are they're just, it's the best. And Fat Shark has really taken both these goggles to the next level with uh, how much you can adjust the optics, right? So you can both adjust the IPD, which is the spacing between the screens and the focus of the screens individually. Now you notice I'm saying screens, not screens. So these box goggles that had one singular screen, these goggles have two small micro displays and very complex optics in front of those micro displays so that these, I'm serious, these screens are like teeny, like smaller than a postage stamp. And they've got some pretty crazy optics in here that enlarge and focus these displays. So it looks like, I mean, when you're in the goggles, it looks like you've just got like a big movie theater in front of you. Using such small screens allows these goggles to be significantly smaller than the box goggles. So, I mean, these just kind of look cooler and I think that having this small, slim goggle is kind of kind of part of the look of FPV, right? When you got them up on your forehead, you just kind of you just kind of look the part and I think a lot of people feel like when they've got the the box goggle on, they just don't quite look the part. I would tell you, don't worry about that. Get what works best for you. And honestly, some people say they actually prefer using the box goggles. Don't really like these micro display goggles. They say it ha they have a hard time focusing on the screen. It kind of gives them a headache. That has never been an issue for me, especially on these newer goggles that give you so much control over the screen spacing and individual focus. But some people say even on these newer ones, no matter what they try, the optics of these micro displays, it upsets their vision and gives them a headache. Now one problem with the box goggles is like I said, they are not gonna be compatible with uh, any digital HD systems. Both of these goggles are. So even the mid-level Attitude V6 has an HDMI port in the bottom and the, the connection points up top to attach Fat Shark's Shark Bite HD system. So. I think this is just such a great option because for 350 bucks, you get something that works out of the box with analog drones and you can upgrade it to have HD FPV. But if you really want the most premium Fast Shark FPV experience, that's gonna be the HDO2. Now, this is a $500 goggle, but it's not just the $150 difference between these two that you need to consider. You also need to consider what this goggle doesn't come with. What I'm holding here is what you get. And you'll notice you're not seeing any points to screw on antennas. And that's because this goggle does not come with any form of receiver. You need to buy a receiver to put into the analog bay here or a shark bite receiver, which again will attach to the front and plug into the HDMI port on the bottom. So why? is a goggle more expensive that comes with less. The biggest reason for the difference in price between these two goggles are that the HDO2 have OLED displays. The micro displays in these goggles are organic LED and what that means is essentially every pixel on the display is an LED itself. The biggest thing I see with OLED displays are the blacks and the, the darks of the video are or darker. You don't get that washed out effect in the dark areas that some of the other goggles get because they are backlit displays. Now these goggles, the, the box goggles, and most other FPV goggles use a, an LCD display that's kind of a backlit liquid crystal display. These goggles, the Attitude V6, use a type of display I've never heard of. It's called LCOS. That stands for Liquid Crystal on Silicon. I do think you get a better image quality out of this LCOS display than the LCD displays that we've been used to flying. But ultimately, the OLED display, it's, it's, it's the best. Now, is the image quality that much better that it's worth not only the price difference, but not getting any sort of receiver, not essentially being able to use this goggle out of the box, that's up to you. Hopefully you got some friends that you could maybe 
try both of them if, if some of your friends have both. But I guess all I can say is the image in these goggles is the best image of the goggles on the table. And if that's what you want, it's worth the price. But to use them, you're gonna have to buy either an analog video receiver or shark bite. And we'll get to all that in a little bit. Now the last goggle that we have on the table is the V2 DJI FPV goggle. Now you'll notice this goggle's pretty big and it's it's actually kind of a hybrid between box goggles and micro display goggles. This goggle does have two individual displays, but they're not really micro displays. They're not really that like ultra teeny tiny display. They're a little bit larger displays, but there's one for each eye and there's optics for each eye. Just simple adjustment of IPD, the distance between the screens. A minus of that is these goggles maybe don't have the same cool look as the Attitude or the HDOs. They're a little bit bigger, so you get some of that box goggle effect bouncing on your head. But going back to some of those pilots that I mentioned that have trouble focusing on these micro display goggles, they don't have any trouble with the DJI. So I think that's why DJI went with this type of design instead of a micro display goggle because they didn't want to put out a product that couldn't be used by those people that have a, have a hard time focusing on those goggles. There's no focus adjustment of these screens, but another thing that comes with the large form factor of these goggles is you can fit glasses under these goggles. I will say the same is true for the uh, Fat Shark box goggles. You can put your glasses under them. But when it comes to these newer micro display goggles, you don't need to do that. You can actually adjust the focus of them. Now, uh, I have a horrible prescription. I'm like negative 6.5. And I think these goggles say they can only, they're only spec to compensate for up to negative six. So I'm outside of the range that these goggles are supposed to be able to, uh, to provide for, but when I'm not wearing my glasses or my contacts, I'm still able to get really good focus with these goggles and that's something that I really like, not having to wear my contacts or my glasses because I can't handle having glasses under box goggles. I've tried it with the DJI, I've tried it with the box goggles, having glasses under the goggles drives me crazy. For some people, it's no problem. That's how Cricket flies. Cricket flies with his uh, with his glasses just under his DJI goggles. So works for some, but it's always driven me crazy. But I think what influenced DJI's decision to go with a, a non-micro display goggle, even more so, was to keep costs down. You might be thinking, what do you mean keep costs down? This is the most expensive goggle on the table. This is a $580 goggle. What, what are you paying for with this goggle? These aren't micro OLED displays. These are big LCD displays. This is a big chunky goggle. Why is this goggle so expensive? Well, that's because this goggle is made to work with the DJI digital FPV system. In terms of FPV performance, that the quality of the video that's transmitted to your goggles, I'll just say it, it's the best. Shark bite HD video is quite good, but when it comes to getting the best video signal to your eyes, it's gonna be the DJI goggles. So now for some, that might make the decision easy, but there are other things that you need to think about. This only works with DJI FPV. These fast track options that can receive analog can work with any analog video transmitter. Analog is pretty universal, so it doesn't matter if your video transmitter is made by TBS or Immersion or Rush or whatever, Analog is pretty much analog and you can use these goggles with any analog system. But what about the Shark Bite? Fat Shark's HD. Is that proprietary like the DJI? Kind of, but not exactly. Shark Bite is kind of similar to analog in that it is just broadcasting out. Shark Bite's whole ethos is to be more compatible. While Fat Shark is currently the only company that makes a Shark Bite transmitter, that transmitter actually can receive video from a variety of different cameras made by a variety of different companies. Fox here, Runcam, and other companies make cameras that connect to the SharkBite transmitters. Additionally, the SharkBite receiver can plug into anything that accepts HDMI. So these goggles just have an HDMI input and that's the only way that SharkBite really connects to it. But you can plug that SharkBite receiver into any goggle that has an HDMI input or any display really. We did an episode where we set up a computer monitor and plugged in a, a SharkBite display. So SharkBite is certainly more open than DJI, which is very close. When you're using DJI, you can only use a DJI transmitter, you can only use a DJI camera, you can only use a DJI Goggle, there's a couple exceptions. I mean, Cadex makes the Vista, but they worked with DJI on that. I mean, really, DJI wants you to use all of their gear. It's very difficult 
to get the DJI video signal anywhere but these goggles. And that's, that's probably the biggest drawback with the V1 goggles. The only way to get video elsewhere than goggles was to get a very expensive DJI smart controller, plug that into the goggles, and then you could plug monitors into the smart controller, but it's, it's very expensive, very cumbersome solution. One of the few enhancements to the V2 goggle is that it's going to connect to your smartphone and I think you can get the video out from the goggles to an app on your phone and then you might be able to get it from your phone to a display. I'm not 100% sure on that because as of recording this video, the firmware for the goggles and the app for the phone to use that feature, those aren't out yet. So I haven't personally experienced that, but it is something that's coming. So I do appreciate that DJI listened and they are making it easier to get the FPV signal on a display and not just in the goggles. But it's still not as easy as with SharkBite or Analog that you can just broadcast to any SharkBite or Analog receiver. But at this point, we're kind of getting into the difference between DJI FPV and SharkBite FPV. And there is so much that we could explore with that that we should probably do a video dedicated to just that. So there's no way around it. Choosing what goggle is right for you is going to be strongly affected by whether you want to fly DJI HD or SharkBite HD. They are both great systems and I think you'll be happy with either system. If you're going to be flying analog, I think the budget options are great. And I also think you should consider the Attitude V6. Again, 350 bucks, pull it out of the box. You can fly analog and it's totally upgradable to HD if you want to make that switch. Now, if you know that you want to fly SharkBite HD FPV, that just eliminates those two options and the DJI as well. And you're going to be picking one of these. HDO2 with the SharkBite, it's definitely going to be the most expensive option but it's gonna be the best SharkBite experience. Now all up to fly SharkBite on the HDO2, you need the $500 goggle and you need the $250 SharkBite receiver. So we're talking about a $750 goggle experience. Man, the DJI goggle for less than 600 really starts to sound attractive, but you have to remember you're really locked into the DJI ecosystem, which is more expensive than the SharkBite components. So the gear that you're putting on your drone is gonna be cheaper. How many drones do you have to build to make up that price difference? I, I don't know. Lastly, if you're certain that you want to fly DJI FPV, this is your only option. So for fun, I kind of want to show you these two maxed out goggles. This is an HDO2 equipped with a shark bite receiver up front and a TBS Fusion analog receiver. This is a very premium, very nice analog receiver. I mean, this is going to be like a real ultimate fat shark setup. It's pretty pricey, right? Now right here, we've got Vortex's set of DJI goggles. This has the True RC stubby antennas on it. These offer improved reception over the standard DJI antennas, and more importantly, they make the goggle a lot smaller because they are shorter. Uh, he's got the quad posits forged carbon front plate on here. That's a pretty blinging piece, and of course, that Rotor Riot goggle strap. So that's just about gonna do it for the five FPV goggles that we think you should consider when shopping for your first or your next set. Whichever goggle you decide here, we have it available on rotorriot.com. Again, there are other goggles available, so if you wanna shop around and find something else other than what we covered here, you're welcome to do so. But again, the goggles in our store are here for a reason. We believe in it, we stand by it, and we'll support you and your purchase of it and make sure that you have a good experience. Whichever goggle you decide to go with, whether it's the attitude v6 or the dji v2 you're gonna have a great time fpv it's the greatest hobby ever you're flying through the air doing power loops shooting gaps so if you're new here you're psyched that you're here welcome hit the subscribe button we put videos out every monday if you enjoyed this video if you learned something about the goggles it helped you make a decision hit the like button let us know you enjoyed it i'm ladrib i'll see you next time on rotor riot